Hello and welcome to part 21 of this Kerbal Space Program 2 for science video series. So in this video what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this probe all the way from EVE all the way up to ELU. Um, now if you've seen the last couple of videos you'll know that we've already done our EVE flyby uh, because this flight is essentially doing two missions in one. So the first one was to enter into EVE's sphere of influence which was the looking inward mission and the second one is to go to ELU and enter into ELU's sphere of influence which is the frosty mug mission. Um, so essentially the idea with this flight is that what we wanted to do was if we basically if you go from Kerbin to EVE you can then use a gravity assist to get back up to Kerbin at which point you can use another gravity assist to get out to Juna you can use a few gravity assists there to get to Jewel and and then that will take you up to ELU. And uh, it's a really good technique to have in your toolkit because basically if you do gravity assists going around the solar system, it will use a hell of a lot less delta V than if you were to do a direct um, transfer to any of the planets. So for example, let's say we're going to um, Juna. Juna would take a couple of thousand delta V to get there straight from Kerbin. Um, whereas if we do gravity assist, it takes a little bit less, but it really comes into its own when you're trying to get out to places like, um, you know, Jewel. If you wanted to go to any of the moons of Jewel as well, it helps. Obviously, we could go to Drez, we could go to Elu, uh, and you can also use a gravity assist via Eve to get down to Moho, which we did actually do in the last video. We went down there and got a bit of extra science. Uh, but like I said, the whole purpose of this particular video is to go up to Elu. Um, so. The first thing we need to do then is we need to find our first gravity assist with Kerbin. So let's first of all start off by setting Kerbin as the target. And you can see that we didn't actually get our apoapsis quite high enough to reach Kerbin's orbit. So we are just going to need to do a little correction burn just to raise our apoapsis up a little bit. So we'll start off then by creating a manoeuvre um, on our periapsis. And then we'll just raise our apoapsis up a little bit until we get our intercept markers, which we have there. So now that's set, we can turn on SAS, we can point at the manoeuvre and of course perform this burn. Now you'll notice that even though it's only a 55 delta V burn, this uh, burn is going to take nearly 18 minutes. And the reason for that is because this probe actually uses a um, Xenon engine, which is a small electric powered engine. Uh, it uses a little bit of Xenon fuel as well, but it's primarily electric electricity that powers this engine. And um, the thing about this engine is it's very high ISP. Um, so it's extremely efficient, however it's also very low thrust of course, which makes it ideal for doing stuff like this uh, on you know deep space probes. It's not very good if say you were wanting to get into orbit around a planet because the burns take so long. Uh, but for stuff like this it's almost perfect. But anyway, let's get ourselves down to zero seconds on the burn timer and we'll start this burn. So obviously we don't want to be sitting here for nearly 18 minutes waiting for this burn to finish and this is going to be one of the shorter burns in this flight as well. Um, so yeah, the best way to get around this is to use the warp function. Now when doing warp, uh, if we were to go to say 50 times warp which is the 5th arrow, what will happen now is every minute will go down every second. So. Um, as you are increasing the warp obviously it gets faster and in this particular case it goes down for you know like say a second per minute we can go up to a hundred times warp which goes down about twice as fast and then a thousand times warp will actually reduce every 10 minutes per second uh, but anyway once we get below a minute we'll cut the throttle and we'll just basically wait until it gets to zero at which point we will cut the throttle and now if we go back onto the map we should have our intersect with Kerbin's orbit but of course we need to actually get a uh, encounter with Kerbin. So when we're doing gravity assist like this obviously we need to first of all start off by finding the encounter and you can see at the moment our first point of intersect markers or the ship marker is actually quite far away from the second markers which is the one with the little planet on it. Um, so what we can do to try and see how many orbits we're going to need to do is we can create a manoeuvre just before the first marker. We'll open it up and then right click on it to bring up these buttons and grab the two arrows on the top. And then as we move the manoeuvre node around you can see that it's changing the position of the uh, you know subsequent markers after we've passed it. So you can see now they are actually starting to get close together. 
uh, which means that we're probably only going to need to do one or two burns or, or orbits to actually get our intercept. So we'll delete that manoeuvre. Then what we'll do is we'll time warp to a point just after the second uh, point of intercept. And now we can do the same thing again. We'll create another manoeuvre just before the first one. We'll open it up and move it around. And you can see they are starting to get nice and close. So what we can do is instead of having to uh, delete the manoeuvre and then you know do the time warp to point thing, we can just leave the manoeuvre node there. And we can actually uh, warp to the manoeuvre and that just makes it a little bit quicker so we're not constantly having to delete and recreate the manoeuvre node. And now that's done, we will open the manoeuvre up again and we'll move it back to see how close we are getting. And you can now see that our second point of intercept markers are actually starting to get quite close. So, yeah, what we'll do then is we'll position the manoeuvre node just after the number one marker, which is when it turns into the two markers. We will warp two points and then basically uh, this should be the point at which we'll be able to actually start creating our manoeuvre. So what we're going to do then now is we are going to open up the manoeuvre node and we're actually going to see which of these arrows will have the most effect. So of course we can use the radial arrows. Uh, I wouldn't recommend using the um, you know the inclination change arrows unless you actually really need to. Uh, but the best ones to use are the prograde or retrograde arrows generally because they are going to cost a lot less delta v. Whereas if we were to change our you know radi radial um, well, do a radial burn, that does cost a lot more delta V. So we'll start off then by pulling out on the prograde arrow. You can see, as we're doing that, it is actually moving the number two markers cl quite close together quite quickly. So yeah, it looks like that's the one we want to do. Uh, but before we actually, you know, get them to meet up, what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on either one of these markers to bring up the information. Then we're going to keep an eye on the distance. Then what we can do is we can actually start moving the manoeuvre node around the orbit to see if we can't find a better place to actually do the burn. So we'll right-click on the manoeuvre. In fact, we we're a bit too close to our probe there. So we'll start moving the manoeuvre around and we'll see just how close we can get them to together. So that bit of information, it keeps popping up and it's very irritating. The only way I've found to get rid of that is to go onto the flight view and back to the uh, map screen. So if I keep on flicking through them during the uh, actual flight, that's the reason why. But anyway, yeah, let's bring this information back up again. And like I say, we'll move the maneuver node around. And yeah, you can see as we're moving it around the orb, it is reducing the actual distance to target. So we'll wait until it starts to go back up again. You can see it's slowing right down. We got down to about, yeah, 662 there is about the best place. So that is probably the best area to actually do this burn. So this way, it just means we're going to be using a little bit less delta V as a result. And of course, the whole point of this uh, technique is to uh, try and conserve delta V. And now you can see we actually have our encounter. So let's focus on curbing and zoom in. And whenever we're doing any gravity assist, we want to try and get our periapsis as close to curbing as possible. So we'll first of all have a look at our inclination, and you can see we're a little bit low, so we'll raise our periapsis up so that it's actually on an equatorial inclination. Then we'll start to move our periapsis in towards curbing. Uh, but before we actually go all the way in towards curbing, we're going to actually have a look and see what this is doing with our actual orbit. So you can see as we're getting close to curbing, it's actually lowering our orbit down, which isn't what we want to do because uh, basically with gravity assist, as you're going around a planet, uh, you'll go around one side and it will lower your orbit, whereas if you go around the other side, it will actually heighten your orbit, it'll raise your orbit up. So, of course, we're coming around the right-hand side of the planet, which means we need to be coming around the left-hand side. So we'll zoom in and we will go around the opposite side of curbing. And now you'll see as we get close to curbing surface, you can see it's actually raising our apoapsis up quite significantly, which is what we want because the whole point in this gravity assist is we're trying to get out towards Juna, uh, wherever it is. I can't quite see it, but there it is. Yeah, we're trying to get out towards Juna. So at the minute, we're already passing through Juna's sphere of um, orbit line. But anyway, let's get our periapsis down as low as we can, which of course, um, on curbing, the atmosphere starts about 70 kilometers. So we don't want to be going any lower than that. So we bring it down as low as we can get it. 
And now when we're getting close like that, it can be a little bit fiddly, um, try to do the final adjustments. So to get a little bit more fine control over your adjustments, you can use the radial arrows and it just uses a little bit more fine control. But I'd only recommend using the radial arrows right at the end because like I say, doing radial burns can be uh, very expensive. But anyway, that's nice and close. So we'll have a look and see what our inclination is doing. You can see the inclination is actually a little bit out. So we need to play around with that to flatten our orbits up a little bit. That's looking much more like it. And now what we can do is, like I say, we are actually trying to get to Duna. So we'll find Duna, we'll right click on that and set that as the target. And now you can see it's actually bringing up our um, intercept markers for Duna. So you can see our number two markers are actually starting to get relatively close together. And you can actually play around with your maneuver node and see if you can't get them even close together. But you can see as we are, um, you know, increasing our burn, it's actually getting them further apart, which means, yeah, we can't actually get them to meet up just yet. Uh, but it can it is possible when you're doing a gravity assist to actually get that gravity assist to meet straight up with the next planet. Uh, but we'll see if we can't get something like that um, further into the video. And of course final thing we need to do obviously because we just messed up our um, orbit is we just need to make sure that we are not too low or too high and that looks pretty good to me i'll just see if we can't get a little bit lower 71 will do the trick and now all we need to do is point at the maneuver warp to the maneuver and perform this burn Right, so this one is going to take about 47 minutes. So as I said, you can use 1,000 times warp. However, as I mentioned, for every uh, second that passes, uh, you'll go down by 10 minutes on the actual burn timer. So that would only take us about four minutes, four seconds to get down, which is why I'd recommend only going up to about 1,000 or 100 times warp on this one. Just as I've said before, it's best to take your time and be patient because it's very easy to go way too far. Um, and end up having to use more delta v getting back to where you want to be anyway when doing maneuvers like this i would actually recommend doing them in the map screen because of course we need to actually see what's going on with regards to our actual orbit line so we'll focus on juna and there it is i'm actually going to cut the throttle or cut the warp just so that i don't make any mistakes and there's juna wait we'll focus on juna and then we'll zoom in and of course we want to basically Where's our encounter? We don't appear to be getting the encounter. Oh no, we're going to Kerbin now, aren't we? Um, so yeah, so we need to focus on Kerbin. <laughs> and now we'll zoom in and we will wait until our orbit actually appears in Kerbin's orbit line. Then we'll manage the throttle, or sphere of influence should I say. Then we'll manage the throttle until we actually uh, get the encounter that we want. You can see our orbit line has appeared. And once it reaches where we want it to be, which is 70-ish kilometers, we'll cut the throttle. Although we'll probably cut the throttle a little early and then actually manage the throttle just, just for the final part of the burn. Okay, let's delete the maneuver. Let's check our inclination out. You can see the inclination is actually a bit out there, which means we're gonna to need to do a mid-course correction. So we'll find our ship we'll position a maneuver about halfway between where we are and our encountering markers and we're just going to quickly fix this and just get ourselves once again down to about 50 ish kilometers 70 ish kilometers should i say and also fix the inclination as well and once again we'll zoom out and we will check our inclination in relation to Juno. And you can actually see we do have our descending node there. So we can use that to uh, check out and make sure that we're actually going nice and flat. So it looks like 0 0.1 is about as far as we're going to get, which is good enough. So that looks good. The uh, periapsis is a little low for my liking. So we'll just make sure that we're going just above 70 kilometers. Now you can see that's going to say it's going to take us three seconds at zero delta V burn. So we'll point at the maneuver and we'll get this burn out of the way.
That was pretty good to me. We could do with extending our periapsis a tiny bit because I don't like going down to uh, 70 kilometers because it's very easy to catch the atmosphere and mess up your orbit. So I'm just going to increase the throttle the tiniest little bit just to uh, get ourselves up above. And 74 should do it. And now we can start thinking about our actual uh, encounter with Juno. So you can see, even though we've got Juno selected as our target, we haven't actually got our intercept markers. And the reason for that is we need to go through um, Kerbin's sphere of influence first. So we'll start off by clicking on the right hand side of our intercept markers and then we'll time warp to point. And you can see now we've gone through Kerbin's sphere of influence, we've now got our intercept markers up. So we'll start off then by once again creating a manoeuvre just ahead of us. We'll see which arrow will make the most effect, so we'll use prograde. That seems to be bringing them close together nicely. And then we'll move the manoeuvre node around and see if we can't get closer. And you can see as we're moving it around it's actually increasing the distance. So that means we really need to do this burn just ahead of where we currently are. So let's bring ourselves as close as we can get. And try and get the uh, encounter. So there we are. So now what we can do is we can find Duna. We'll focus on that. And we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll get the uh, periapsis as close to Juna's um, atmosphere as possible. And Juna's atmosphere actually starts around about seven, uh, 50 kilometers up from the surface. So we want to be going no lower than that. So you can see our inclination is a little bit high, so we'll use that. We'll try and get ourselves as close as we can. And once we start to get close, we'll use the radial arrows to actually bring ourselves down. So we're still a little high there, so we need to pull ourselves down a bit and we'll use the radial arrows now to bring ourselves around. And we are actually getting an encounter with Ike there, which is less than ideal. Um, it could cause issues. Let's zoom out and see if we can see what it's doing to our orbit. And you can see now, yeah, our projected orbit is actually disappearing because we've uh, uh, hit our conic patch limit, which is slightly irritating. So let's go around the other side of the planet and see if that'll make much of a difference. We're still getting our encounter with Ike. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to miss the encounter entirely. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to see if we can't work out which one is doing which. So this one appears to be lowering our orbit. So we need to be actually going around the left hand side of the planet. So what we'll do then is we'll get ourselves on the other side. There we go, and now we go, we'll do this burn, and once we've done this burn, we should be able to see what's actually happening to our um, projected orbit. So let's point at the manoeuvre. Then we'll walk to the manoeuvre and perform this burn. Okay, so I did go a bit far on the warp there, but that's not a major issue. Uh, but as you can see, we're just over, or just under an hour at the minute, so we could potentially use the 1,000 times warp. Although, like I say, when we're doing 1,000, every uh, 10 minutes will go down per second, so we'd only have about five seconds to go, which is why I'm just going to go for 100 times warp and just uh, relax for a couple of minutes until we actually get there. So anyway, now we are coming down to zero seconds. We should be getting our encounter, which we have. So we're going to burn a little bit past zero seconds until we get to about where we want to be. And now I'm going to cut the throttle. I'm just going to manage the throttle until we actually get to just over 50 kilometers above the surface. You can see the inclination is out now, so we're actually going to need to do a uh, mid-course correction anyway. So we'll cut the throttle there. We'll delete that manoeuvre and we'll find the midway point between our ship and Duna, which is that one there, because it's only highlighting half of the orbit. So we'll click there, we'll create the manoeuvre, we'll zoom back into Duna, and then we will do our mid-course correction and get ourselves where we actually want to be. Sixty-six will do. 
we'll double check our inclination if we can. Yeah, this is uh, this is where we really need to have um, like seven or eight conic patch limits because of course we can't actually see what our inclination is going to be after we have uh, left Juna. So we'll faff around a little bit and see if we can't fix it. Get as, get as close to equatorial as we physically can. One way to judge your equatorial uh, line is by trying to find the uh, orbit line of Juna, which is very difficult to do. Okay, we need to set the target, that makes it a bit easier. And then we can actually get our projected orbit to pass through Juna's um, actual orbit line. So that looks pretty good to me, so we will now point at the manoeuvre and get this burn out of the way. So that looks pretty decent to me, let's now have a look at our actual orbit. Yeah, that looks okay to me. We'll just check our inclination, and that looks pretty flat, which is good. And of course, we are going to be doing a few different um, gravity assists with Juna. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is we actually want to warp into Juna's sphere of influence because we haven't done a radiation survey yet. So we'll get ourselves relatively close to Juna's SOI. We'll find the point of the orbit where it only highlights half the orbit, and we'll do a time warp to point before we actually enter into the sphere of influence. Once we are close, we should be able to find the broken part of the orbit, at which point we can click anywhere on that time warp to point, and this will bring us into Juno's sphere of influence. So now we are here, we can do our first bit of science, because like I say, we do have a radiation survey on board here, and we haven't done that around June yet, so we'll hit the experiment button, we'll hit remove all to get rid of the uh, environmental surveys, because we've already done that. And then what we want to do is we want to warp to low orbit, and low orbit around Juna is about um, 50, sorry, 70 kilometers above the surface. So we'll focus on Juna, we'll zoom in, and we'll warp to a point just ahead of our periapsis. And now what we'll do is we'll do a manual warp until we get down to about 70 kilometers. And once we're there, we'll hit the experiment button again and start the uh, survey in low orbit. Let's just go on to our um, parts manager, go to science and open up the uh, radiation survey. Just make sure it is running, which it is. And like I say, we should actually be able to get this done uh, in this single pass by. But if not, then we'll do it in the next one. The next thing, of course, we're going to be doing is we are going to be going through Ike's sphere of influence, which means we're going to be able to get even more science. There we are, that would appear to be that one done. But it doesn't seem to have actually finished the survey, so we'll remove that. We only have the survey at high orbit, so it looks like we didn't quite get there, but we'll transmit this and get it back to the KSC. And then we'll go back to the map, and this time we'll warp into uh, uh, Ike's sphere of influence, so we'll do it there. Time warp to point. And I don't think we're going to actually have a, a low orbit pass by of Ike for this one, so we'll just hit the experiment button again. Get rid of the uh, radiation survey and all of the spent science. We'll do a manual warp and do a nice flyby of Ike. Now that's done, we can transmit that science. And then what we'll do is we'll go back onto the map and now we will warp out of Juna's sphere of influence and think about the next encounter with Juna.
So yeah, I think what I'm probably going to do then is I'm actually going to cut the next part of this video out because it's already going to be quite long as it is. And I want to save a little bit of time and also we are just going to be doing exactly the same thing for the next few gravity assists. Because it's going to take another four or five uh, gravity assists around Juna to get our apoapsis up toward Jules orbit line. Um, at which point we'll then be able to find an encounter with Jewel and then get ourselves out to Elu. Obviously we're going to try and get that uh, radiation survey done in low orbit around Juna as well while we're at it. Uh, but once that's done we'll get back into the video and we'll actually uh, get ourselves up to Elu. And now, as you can see, we have finally got our apoapsis way above uh, Jules' uh, sphere of inf or orbit line. Uh, it's actually also above Elu's orbit line as well, so you might think now would be a good time to just go straight to Elu instead. However, if we say we'll set Elu as the target, you can see first of all that our intersect markers are quite far apart. Uh, let's see what happens if we create a manoeuvre and move it beyond our the intersect markers. And you can see they are starting to move a bit closer together. And you can see there, they're actually uh, the number two markers do look like they're getting quite good. However, the big issue here is the inclination, because like I say, the inclination is so drastically different that that would potentially be quite expensive. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to, as I mentioned before, use Jewel instead to actually get this encounter. So we'll delete that manoeuvre. We will then select Jewel as our target. Now you can see once again the intersect markers are relatively far apart so let's have a look and see what happens if we go beyond them. And it looks to me like they're actually starting to uh, yeah, to actually drift further apart. So we probably have to do several orbits to actually get a closer encounter with Jewel. Uh, which at the moment, given that it will take over eight years to do an orbit, uh, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is try and see if we can't get the uh, number two markers to actually meet up from where they are. So we'll create a manoeuvre. We'll do a little bit of a burn. You can see that is bringing the number two markers together nicely. And then once again, we'll move the manoeuvre node around and see if they are getting any closer. When they're not, they're actually getting further apart. So we'll go as close to our ship as we can. And then we'll use this burn to, like I said, try and see if we can't get the encounter with Jewel. And Jewel is very easy to actually get an encounter with, given that it's got by far the largest gravitational well of any of the planets in the solar system. Um, but of course, we don't actually want to be using Jewel to get to, uh, uh, you know, to change our apoapsis too much. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to make sure that we are going into Jewel's sphere of influence as far as we can. Although we're not going to need to go low down because, like I say, we uh, only want to be basically using this to do an inclination change. So we'll get um, as much capture with Jewel as we can, which looks pretty good there. And then what we're going to do is, like I say, we're going to use this gravity assist to see if we can't get to Elu. So we'll now set Elu as the target. And you can actually see already that the number two markers there are actually already pretty close. So we'll zoom into them and we'll see if we can't actually get these to meet up. Yeah, the first thing we'll do then is we'll change our inclination and we'll actually bring it down towards um, Elu's orbit line. So we'll bring this number down with the little ship on it down towards the orbit line. And then what we will do is we'll use our prograde arrow to see if we can't get the two to match up. I might find sometimes that the... Uh, the manoeuvre node does play silly buggers when you're a bit far out like that. I'm not quite sure why it happens. Uh, the best way to do it is just to zoom out or centralise the manoeuvre node in the middle of the uh, screen and it should fix it. Uh, but anyway, like, as you can see, now we actually have our encounter with Elu, so we can do all of that with just this one uh, manoeuvre, uh, which is much better than having to try and do the manoeuvre um, on, you know, direct. So we'll focus on Elu and we'll zoom in and we'll see just how close we can get. And yeah, that is 35. That looks okay. We could always potentially try and just leave it and then actually finish off the manoeuvre 
uh, when we get there. So we'll just leave it like that, and then we'll see just how close we can get once we've actually performed this burn. So yeah, once again, we'll point out the manoeuvre and warp to it and perform this uh, manoeuvre. There we are. So now we are into Elu's Sphere of Influence. We'll get rid of the Maneuver Node. And we'll just use the RCS to actually see if we can't get ourselves uh, to where we want to be. So we'll point at Prograde on the Nav Ball and make sure it is oriented. And then we'll use the IJ, K and L keys to actually change our um, orbit and try and get as close as we can. And it looks like it's not going to have a huge amount of effect with the uh, thrust limit the way it is. So I'm going to go on to the Parts Manager. I'm going to find utility and I'm just going to uh, manage the thrust limiter to get ourselves to actually where we want to be. So yeah, 24 kilometers should do the trick. Now then, all we need to do is warp into Elu's Sphere of Influence, although of course we haven't actually done any radiation science around Jewel yet, have we? So we'll actually go to Jewel first. So we'll find our encountering Jewel point, and then because we're not going into low orbit, we can literally just uh, click on any point of this orbit and time warp to point. There we go. So we'll hit the experiment button. We'll uh, remove all and we'll just go onto the uh, science tab and see, make sure it's actually running the uh, experiment, which it is. So we'll get that one out of the way. And now we can transmit that to the uh, KSC. And now we can start thinking about actually going to uh, ELU. There we are in Elu's Sphere of Influence. So yeah, that is the uh, Frosty Mug mission done. Uh, so now all we need to do is do a bit more science. And after this, we are actually going to go to um, uh, Drez as well. Um, however, we first of all want to, of course, do our radiation survey from low Elu orbit. So we'll go back onto the map and we will warp to a point just before our periapsis. Now, Elu's low orbit starts at 60 kilometers, I believe. So, just as we did with Juna, what we'll do is we will make sure our altimeter is set to C, and then we'll do a manual warp until we get down to about 60k. And while we're waiting for that, we can uh, marvel at the beauty of Elu. So now we're below 60, we will set that running again. And yeah, this is only probably the second time I've actually been to Elu, given that the only time I went before that was during the uh, you know the first kind of full dress rehearsal for this uh, for this video. Um, so yeah, I've never really seen this planet in much detail before. It's quite an interesting little planet, is this one? And I mean, I assume we're going to have to land on it at some point. Um, it's going to be an interesting one to land on given that it's so uneven and it's so difficult to get to but of course using these gravity assists will make it a lot easier. It'll give us a lot more uh, you know, delta V to actually get down. Uh, but anyway, let's get this um, experiment out of the way. There we are and now that has given us 2520 science which isn't bad at all. Especially since we're going to be getting 8,000 science for, um, you know, doing this, uh, you know, going into Elu's Sphere of Influence. So we'll transmit that to the KSC. 
And then, like I say, that's pretty much all we really need to do on this flight. However, since we have so much Delta V left, we've barely even touched the uh, the actual um, you know fuel on board. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Dres, as I mentioned. So we'll zoom out. We'll warp to just outside of uh, Elu's sphere of influence. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find Dres, which is there. We'll set that as the target. And now we're going to try and see if we can't get an encounter. So there is a bit of a problem here now. Um, we could try and get the encounter from where we are, which wouldn't be too difficult. However, the big issue is we can't actually do any burns at the moment because uh, I don't know if I mentioned, but this flight has taken over 36 years so far and the uh, RTGs that we have actually only had about 21 years of fuel in them. So by now, the uranium has uh, well and truly decayed, which means they're actually not pr producing any electric charge and we're too far away from the sun for these solar panels to produce enough charge to actually run the engine. So uh, we, we're basically going to need to uh, do our manoeuvre closer to the sun, um, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, it's just what happens when you use these kind of engines, uh, but it's just one of those things. So what we're going to have to do then is we're going to have to create a manoeuvre closer to the sun. So let's start off by going as close to the sun as we can get, which obviously is our periapsis. So we'll create the manoeuvre here, and we'll see if we can't actually get our encounter with Drez. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do then is instead of trying to get the uh, encounter from where we are, because it looks to me like it's going to take quite a bit of doing, and it can be quite frustrating trying to get it if it's not getting it first time. So what we'll do instead then is we'll actually perform this burn, and then we'll do a mid-course correction somewhere out here, and that should actually give us the encounter we want. So yeah, let's point out the manoeuvre, and we'll get this burn out of the way. Now you can see that because we are so close to the sun that the energy isn't actually running down at all which means that the solar panels are more than enough to actually uh, power the engine. Uh, so let's get this burn done and this is a good thing to, or a good technique to use because sometimes you might find that no matter what you do with a manoeuvre node you cannot get the uh, markers to actually meet up. Um, so we'll get this burn done and then we'll see if we can actually get the encounter. There we go, so that's that burn done. So now let's create another manoeuvre just ahead of us. And we'll move it around our orbit and see what happens. So yeah, they're getting still about as close as they're going to get there. And we'll see if we can't get an encounter now. Like I say, it can be a bit of a faff, can this. There we go, there's our encounter. So like I say, if you find that when you are trying to do a uh, manoeuvre like that, and it's proving almost impossible, then just do the burn, get yourself as close as possible, get that burn done, and then create another manoeuvre, and you should actually be able to get the encounter pretty easily. So let's focus on Drez and see how close we can get. And Drez is another one of those planets that I've only ever been to once during the preparation for this, and it's actually possibly one of my favourite planets, actually, given the fact that if we zoom in, you can see it actually has rings, which is pretty awesome. Um, now, I don't know if these rings are actually collidable, uh, let me know in the comments if they are or aren't. Um, but generally, when you're going to any planet with rings, the best option is just to basically try and enter the uh, orbit around the planet in any other um, inclination than that which would actually get you you know, colliding with the rings. But let's see how close we can get. You can see, once again, it's proving quite challenging. 
I think the radial burn is what we're going to want to do. So we'll see if we can't get ourselves closer with a radial. And now we're actually encounter or we're actually crashing into the surface. So what I'm going to do then is instead of faffing around with the maneuver node, I'm just going to leave it like that, and we'll just manage the throttle once we've actually uh, got there. So we'll point at this maneuver, and it's only a two delta V burn, is this, which is pretty decent. It's only going to cost us uh, often take 53 seconds. So yeah, we'll get that one done, and then once we've actually flown past um, Drez and got the signs from there, that'll be it for this video. Right, so there is our encounter. So now we can remove the manoeuvre. And like I say, we'll just go as close as we can. And once again, it doesn't have any atmosphere, this one. So we can just use RCS and see just how low we can go. I think I'm going to go around the other side so we get a bit more of the uh, daylight side of the planet. Yeah, there's 10 kilometres. That looks pretty good. So yeah, now all we need to do is actually warp to Drez. And there we are. So let's have a look around see if we can't see it. We can't see it just yet, but we're in high orbit now, so we'll do our radiation survey. We're also going to get some, uh, you know, environmental samples as well because we've not been here yet. And now, as as before, we'll try and warp to low orbit. Now, low orbit around Drez actually starts at 25 kilometers. So there's a good chance that, given that we're going to be flying past it so fast, we're not actually going to be able to uh, get the low orbit. But we might as well uh, enjoy it and actually, uh, you know, um, marvel at the rings. So we'll time warp to point. We'll have a look around and see where it is. And yep, there it is. So you can just about see the rings. So let's uh, do a manual warp until we get down to low orbit. And like I say, it starts at about 25 kilometers above the surface with this planet. Um, so it's not ideal for doing the low orbital uh, radiation survey, but hopefully we'll get it. Um, if not, then we can always do it when we come back to do the uh, landing at the Eye of Dres. Once we hit 25, we'll start the survey. But as I say, I'm guessing because we're going so fast, we're not actually going to get this survey done. But we'll have a look at our science and see what the time is saying. So yeah, we're already going back up again. We're not even at 40 seconds yet. So we're not going to be able to get that survey in this particular flyby. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that Drez might actually be one of my favourite pl planets on this uh, on this game, uh, purely because of the rings. It's the only planet at the moment with rings. Although, of course, once we get the Interstellar uh, update, we should actually get more planets with rings, which will be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much everything there is for this particular video. Uh, like I say, it was. Uh, I mean, it wasn't the most interesting video, I'm sure, given that we spent so much time in the map view. Um, and gravity assist can be a bit tedious because they take so long, but as I mentioned, it does take considerably less delta V. I mean, we're not even at half a tank at the moment of um, the uh, you know of the xenon fuel. Uh, but we've got another 1400 uh, signs from that, so we'll transmit that. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to uh, recover the 1200 samples, but we'll get those samples eventually when we come over here uh, with the Kerbals. But yeah, like I said, that is everything for this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, then in the next one, what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be building what I'm essentially... you Well, it's, it's essentially going to be a transfer stage, uh, which basically the idea is I want to build something in orbit around Kerbin, or that we'll put into orbit around Kerbin, and what it'll do is it will act as essentially a transfer shuttle 
to transfer things to and from various planets around the solar system. So the idea basically being is that instead of when we build a lander or a space plane or anything like that, instead of building it with a transfer stage included in the rocket that we're launching from the KSC, what we can do instead is just make it so it'll go up into low curve in orbit, at which point we can then dock with the uh, transfer stage slash um, space station in orbit, which will then uh, actually take it to and from the various parts of the solar system. Um, so yeah, that should be an interesting one. I don't know if it'll work in the long run, given that I've not really tested it, you know, extensively. So it might, we might have to replace it. Although the idea with the space station is, of course, you can actually uh, add bits to it, so it could be quite interesting. Um, but anyway, like I say, that's everything there is for this particular video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, then I'd really appreciate it if you like and subscribe, and maybe even let me know what you thought. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one.